being less than you can be, doing less than you could do, trying less than you could try, doing it with less enthusiasm than you could. I think it somehow damages the mind. It damages our self-image. Because here's what I've discovered happens. The minute you turn this around and start extending yourself, it isn't the value you get from extending yourself that's the greatest value. It's how you feel about yourself that's the greatest value. Because see, it's not what we get that makes us valuable. It's what we become. And part of becoming is to see what all you can become. See what all you can do. See how much you can earn, how much you can share, how much you can start, how far you can reach, how far you can extend your influence. Now, that kind of commitment to philosophical thinking about attitude and about activity, we call this the potential for life change. The five major pieces to the life puzzle, we've covered three of them. Number one is philosophy. Number two is attitude. Number three is activity. Number four, I'm sure you're ahead of me, results. Results is the name of the game. The quest of life is to see, one, what we can become, two, what we can accomplish, what we can become, and what we can accomplish. The key to life is to become skillful enough to do rewarding things with our life. Influence, productivity, activity, results, economic, social, personal, spiritual. But results is the name of the game. It's the reason for the season is in the fall to see what has come from the miracle of your hand and the seed and the soil, and the seasons, and the rain, the changes, to cope with it all, and to see what you can make out of what's available. One of the most interesting ancient stories said, a master had three servants, and he gave them talents. Talents is simply value. Philosophy is to determine value. And once you understand that you have value, the key is to see what you can do with it. And here was the commission that the master gave his three servants. He gave one five talents, the other one two, and the third one one talent. And his commission was, see what you can do with these values. And that's what life is all about. See what you can do with your mind. See what you can do with your skill. See what you can do with your hands. See what you can do with your thinking, your possibilities, your capabilities. The key is to see what you can do with it all. Because results is the name of the game. And he said, I'll be gone for a while, and when I return, we'll go over the results. Here's all life expects us to do. Make measurable progress in reasonable time. Now, according to the story, the master evidently was gone, reasonable time. We can't ask every five minutes, how are you doing now? But that's unreasonable. And we can't wait five years, that'd be too late. So that's what we call reasonable time to ask, how are you doing now? What progress have you made now in this long list of human values and experience? So the master, having been gone, evidently reasonable time, came back, got the three servants together, and asked one of life's most important questions. How did you do? In the time that was gone, what progress did you make? What results did you show? He asked this servant who had five talents what happened, and that servant said, I turned five into ten. Those numbers, I think, are very important, five and ten. Do you think they have any significance? I think in higher learning, they have very much significance. Now, in average learning, it probably doesn't matter. But in higher learning, we say it's very important to understand the numbers. Key life question, should we be expected to double our values in reasonable time? Answer, of course. Shouldn't we be expected to make progress? How many years do you want your child to spend in fourth grade? <laughs> About one. You say, well, if they're nice kids, would you give them three or four years? You say, no. You can't give your child four years to get through fourth grade. That's too much time to make such small progress. Now, wouldn't it be important to ask those same questions all of our life? See, we build those first grade desks so small so they won't fit at age 21. And shouldn't it be a reasonable question? What are you doing here? All this time has passed. So I think it's very important, according to the story, to go from 5 to 10 in reasonable time. Now, the master said in response to these numbers, good job, well done. And to this servant, he said, what happened? That servant said, I turned 2 into 4. Now, would you find that significant, turning 2 into 4? I think it is. Key phrase, life is a numbers game. Part of life is a numbers game. How many books should you read to be adequately prepared to debate the major life issues in the next 10 years? Do you think it's important to come up with a a pretty good reasonable number of books in a wide variety of subjects to be adequately prepared to debate the major life issues in the next 10 years? The answer is of course. Now wouldn't it be important to know about what the number of those books are and what the wide range of major life topics are? This is very important stuff. This is not get by stuff now. Or you can get a crust of bread and a pair of shoes and stay out of the rain and do okay. But this is called higher learning for success and leadership and influence. Skills that serve well for the future. So it's very important number. How many pounds overweight should you be at age 50? <laughs> Approximately. About none. Well, we may let you borrow one or two, but five and we say, hey. Ten and we say, hey, hey. Fifteen and we say, hold it. Twenty and we turn on the red lights and the sirens. 
you can't go beyond 20 with any reasonable amount of safety for your health and your future. So numbers, numbers are very important. When a reasonable time has passed to say, let's go over the numbers one more time to make sure we're not off track. Everything by longevity tends to drift off track. So we have to keep coming back what we call mid-course correction. If you're headed for the moon, the early guidance system when you first blast off doesn't serve for the whole trip. You got mid-course correction. And they're very important when you're headed for the moon. <laughs> because you can miss Kansas City and hit St. Louis and you're all right, but you can't miss the moon, right? <laughs> so, results being the name of the game, when reasonable time has passed, we have got to among reason-thinking people to check out your numbers, okay? And whatever these numbers may represent in skills or learning or capacity or equity of mind, five to ten, two to four. The master said to this servant, I gave you one talent, what happened? That servant said, I've still got the same talent. And the story said, the master lost his coup or something like that. We call that proper response to lack of results. We must show that the insidious is insidious. We must show how empty life can be without measurable progress. We must get right on the problems and the challenges lest we yield too easy to the things that can leave our lives empty instead of full and leave us with pennies instead of fortune. We must have proper response to lack of results. Jesus said to his disciples one day, does that fig tree have any figs? Is that an important life question? Does the fig tree have any figs? That's such an important life question. If it's a fig tree, his disciples said, no, sir, that tree doesn't have any figs. The story said Jesus lost his cool. One of the few times he lost his cool. We call that proper response to lack of results. Shouldn't we pour it on? Lack of results? Shouldn't we make it clear? Shouldn't we become emotional? Shouldn't we become philosophically strong and find and select powerful words that will illustrate the point? Lack of results, right? So... I guess the moral to the story is fig trees better have figs, especially when the maker of the fig tree comes by. Results is the name of the game. I'm teaching kids now how to be rich by age 40. If you live in America with banks and capital and, and money and churches and sermons and libraries and books and teaching and training and classes and rallies and inspiration, shouldn't you be rich by age 40? If you're not, isn't something wrong? The word isn't right. The word's wrong. Something's wrong. Now, there's nothing wrong with the country and there's nothing wrong with the community and there's nothing wrong with the library and the books and there's nothing wrong with the churches and the sermons and there's nothing wrong with the school and the teachers and there's nothing wrong with what's happening and there's nothing wrong with you, but there's something wrong with your philosophy. Somebody sold you the wrong plan. Wow, it's easy to buy the wrong plan, buy the wrong philosophy, and make errors in judgment that compound into penny instead of trade. So one of the major reasons for looking at results is to see what might be wrong with activity. Maybe it's activity that's producing poor results. Now, a lot of people are working hard, but they're not making much progress. Here's what we teach in leadership skills. Don't mistake movement for achievement. Boy, it's easy to get faked out by being busy. The key is not just being busy. The key is doing what? It's easy to be busy and be making figure eights instead of much progress. So we look at results to see if there may be some difficulty with activity. Here's where we may need to go to work. Activity. Because it takes activity to bring enterprise into being. There's a whole study here on activity. Activity is like birth pain. Disciplined activities like birth pains. Now, I'm short on experience here. But... <laughs> I'm sure the mothers in the room would tell us it ain't easy. But see, it wasn't meant to be easy. Values were meant to be costly. The only way we can appreciate a value is by its cost. If it doesn't cost much, we probably wouldn't call it valuable. True winning is a great word, but the price is to play with all your heart and mind and perhaps do some losing sometimes so that when you do win, Boy, the worth and the value of the winning now becomes a high appreciation simply because now we understand both sides of this equation, price and promise. So we take a look at activity, and as we look at results, maybe something's wrong with attitude. Maybe it's how we feel. Maybe we've been nudged off course by eating simply by making some corrections in philosophy.